Hey class, this is our last lecture of unit three, and it's actually part 4.1, but it's part, um, it will be under the unit three exam, and it's under the unit three notes. So just to be clear, make sure you complete the 4.1 homework as part of the unit three list of assignments. Um, and what it is is systems of linear equations. So we've been graphing and solving linear, finding the solution for linear equations, linear inequalities, and now we're doing systems of linear equations. A system just means there's more than one, two or more equations, okay? The solution of a system of two equations in two variables, when they say in two variables, they just mean the two variables x and y. Two variables are x and y is an ordered pair xy that makes both equations true. The solution is the point of intersection of the graphs of the two equations. So um, the ordered pair just means a point, right? So if I have this line and it's on the graph, sorry, so it's on the plane, that means that every point along this line, and this line goes forever in both directions, will be a solution to, will be an x, y, right? I don't know, maybe this one is one, three, okay? One x, three y. Every, point on this line will be a solution for the equation of the line. So I can put one in for the X of that equation and I can put three in for the Y of that equation and that equation will always be true, okay? So if you have a system, that just means you have two different lines on your plane, they cross and that means they share a point. So that point will be true for your first line, L1, and that point will be true for the equation of your second line, L2. So that's what that means, okay? You replace X with the number, the first number in the ordered pair, and then you uh, replace Y with the second number in the ordered pair, and that equation is true, and it is a point on the line when you graph it, okay? So possible solutions of systems of equations. There are three options. You might intersect in one point. So we have L1 and we have L2, okay? For all of these, we have an L1 and an L2. Here, they cross in one place. They have one point that is common to both of them. We can say cross or we can say intersect in one place at one point. So that is your, that one point is your one solution, okay? No solutions will never intersect. And they are parallel, right? The only lines that will never intersect are parallel lines. And then a, an infinite number of solutions, just like the infinity symbol that we've been working with this semester. Infinite number of solutions means all points are in common. It is the same line or the lines are on top of each other. They are on the same line forever. So we have infinite solutions, okay? So you might say, you might get one solution. Your solution will be X comma Y, but those will be numbers. You might get no solution or you might get infinite solutions, okay? So first we're just gonna practice. Is that solution on the graph? 
is that solution on the graph of this line? Is that solution on the graph of this line? Okay. So I'm going to remember that the first number is always the X. The second number is always the Y. I'm going to substitute. Anywhere I see X, I'm gonna put in a negative three. Anywhere I see Y, I'm gonna put in a positive one, okay? If the equation is true, it is a solution for that equation. Ready? So L1, I'm gonna separate them out. L1 is X minus Y equals negative four. And L just stands for line because these are all linear equations. These are all linear equations, so we call them line one, line two. As we said, X is negative three and Y is positive one. Negative three minus one is negative four. So we say that is true. Okay, so that is a solution for line one. This point is on line one. Now we'll do L2. 2x plus 10y equals 4. 2 times negative 3 plus 10 times 1 is 4. That's a negative 6 plus 10 is 4. That's the same as saying 10 minus 6 is 4, and that is true, right? So that is also true. So we can say this is a solution of the system. This must be where these two lines cross each other. And we can quickly graph that on Desmos, okay? So our first one was x minus y equals negative four. Our second one was two x plus 10, sorry, 10 y equals four. They cross right here, it's negative three, one, okay? And that was the point they gave us. They said, is this point on the system? It is. All right, example number two, same thing. Ex determine whether four two is a solution of the system. Four is our X, two is our Y. So we're gonna say L1, 2x minus 5y equals negative 2, or 2 times 4 minus 5 times 2 is negative 2. Okay. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8, minus 5 times 2 is positive 10, negative 2 is the same. 8 minus 10 is negative 2. Negative 2 is equal to negative 2. So we say this is true. So this is a solution for line 1. Okay. Line 2 is 3x plus 4y equals 4. 3 times 4 plus 4 times 2 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 2 is 8. 12 plus 8 is 20, right? Is 20 equal 4? 20 is not equal to 4. So we say that this is false, right? And we can say this is a point on line 1, but it is not a point on line 2. So it cannot be the point where they intersect. They might intersect somewhere else. There might be a different solution but the solution is not for two, okay? So now we have two X minus five Y equals negative two. Our point that we found was four two and it is on that line, right? But, the second one was 3x plus 4y equals 4. It crosses, but the solution is 0 0.522, 0 0.609.
this would be the solution for those that system of equations. So this is not a solution. It's only true for one of the lines. All right, solve the system of equations by graphing. Okay, uh, so if I was to graph this, I would need to solve for y, right? So that I know where my y-intercept is and I know what my slope is. So let's start. 2x minus y equals 6. Subtract 2x. Now I have negative y equals negative 2x plus 6. Divide by negative 1. Now I have y equals 2x minus 6. That means my y-intercept is negative 6. So that is where my first point I'm going to work on is uh, 0 on the x, negative 6 on the y. OK. And my slope is 2. That means I go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. OK. And I just keep going. So that's my L1. I don't have a ruler. I do have a ruler, but it's downstairs. So that's one of my lines. All right, my second line is x plus 3y equals 10. This is why I'm not excited to graph this x plus 3y equals 10. We'll subtract x. Now I have 3y equals negative x plus 10. Okay. Divide by 3. I get y equals negative 1 third x plus 10 over 3. That means I have to put my y-intercept my b is zero and then a fraction, 10 over three. If it was nine over three, that would just be three, right? Because nine divided by three is three, but 10 divided by three is three and a third. So one, two, three and a third. And then I have to go with my slope down one over three down one over three. And then I graph that, <laughs> oh, it's terrible. I graph that and I try to see where they intersect. This one is crossing whole numbers. This one isn't, the points that I'm finding are not whole numbers, right? So it might be one, two, three, four, two, right? It might be four, two. Yeah, I don't know. So I don't like the solving by graphing because you might get a fraction and then you're supposed to draw the fraction and figure out where a line that you started on a fraction crosses another line. You can check it in Desmos, so that's good. But for graphing by hand, it's not, it's not reliable enough, I don't think. X plus three Y equals 10. And you can see where it crosses, four, two. Yeah, so that's what we got, but it just doesn't look. Um, doesn't look as trustworthy as if you were to do math. All right, so we got four, two. I'll show you the different other ways of solving systems of equations. And then just know that even if it tells you to how to do it, you don't have to do it the way they want you to because they're never gonna know, right? All your exams are multiple choice. And if you find the right answer and you didn't graph, that's okay. You found it a different way such as the substitution method. To use the substitution method, you 
take an equation, solve it for the variable. This is solved for X because X is alone and substitute the new expression. This is what this is called, the new expression for the variable into the other equation and solve for that other variable. So here we first need the equation solved for X, okay? One of its variables, the variable is X. Then substitute the new expression for that variable, the new expression for X into the other equation and solve for the other variable Y, okay? Solve for X, substitute y, that equation for X, solve for Y. All right, so here we have 2X plus 3Y equals 13, and we know X is Y plus four. So I'm gonna say 2Y plus four plus 3Y equals 13. Now, do you see why this would be helpful? If I have two variables, I have X and Y, I can't solve for either one, right? If I get Y alone, I'll still have an X over here and I won't know what to put in for X to get that Y to be a number. So we want there to be only one variable. It doesn't matter if it's only X or only Y, we want there to be only one because then you can solve for that one, all right? So that becomes, we're gonna uh, distribute two times y and two times positive four. So that becomes two y, four times two becomes eight. Okay, eight plus Five y equals thirteen. I combine the two y and the three y; they become five y. Uh, subtract the eight. Five y is five because thirteen minus eight is five, and then we're going to divide by five. Y is one. Okay. Now. I just take that y equals one and I put it back up here, okay? y equals one, I could put it here or I could put it here. This one looks easier, right? The screen is too wet. It's kind of dark. Right? All right, so I could take that y equals one, I could put it here or I could put it here and solve it, okay? X equals one plus four, so X is five. Or two X plus three, replacing the Y with one, equals 13. Two X plus three is 13. Subtract three. Two X is 10, divide by two, divide by two, X is five. So either way, I found X is five from either equation. So my point, we solved the system and the one point that is on both the lines is X five, Y one. Let's check that out. Our equations are two X plus 3y equals 13 and x equals y plus 4. They cross at 5, 1. And that is the answer we got. Okay, the elimination method. This is the method I use the most often. All right. Oh, and they've given us an easy one. So the first thing you want to do is line up your like terms. X and X are alike, Y and Y are alike, and then the constant seven and nine are alike. So it's already lined up. And what we're trying to do 
just like here we got rid of the X and just had a longer one with more Y's. Here we're trying to get rid of either the X or the Y. It doesn't matter, it's up to you, okay? So here we have a positive Y and a negative Y, so I'm gonna get rid of the Y's. Get rid of the Y's. X and X, so you're just doing a big addition problem. X and X is two X. Y and negative Y is canceled. Nine and seven is 16. So we have two X equals 16. Divide by two, you get X is eight, right? X is eight. And now you put that X back up into either of these to find Y. Eight plus Y equals seven, subtract eight. Y is negative one. So my solution is eight, negative one. For the x plus y is seven and x minus y is nine they cross at eight negative one all right example six. Oh, the addition method is exactly the same as the substitution or sorry the elimination method um, this one's just going to take longer because it has fractions, right? So first we need to get rid of the fractions. We have in the denominator three, four, and two. That means I need a number that three divides into, four divides into, and two divides into. I would say the number 12, right? Okay, so here we have the best way to space this out. I'm gonna put one over here and one over here. Two thirds X plus one fourth Y equals negative three halves, okay? And we decided we're gonna multiply everything by 12 to get rid of all fractions. But still a negative, don't worry, miss that. All right, so 12, yeah, we're okay. 12 times 2 thirds x plus 12 times 1 fourth y equals 12 times negative 3 halves. Okay. This is difficult, but we've been practicing this semester and you can do it. So 12, 3 goes into 12 four times. So that becomes a four, that becomes a one because we divide them both by three. And then four times two is eight. Okay. Four goes into 12 three times. Three times one is one. So we say eight X plus one Y. Right? Yes. And then 12, sorry, uh, two goes into 12, two, six times. So that becomes a six. And six times three, six times a negative three is a negative 18. So we divided by four, or sorry, we got divided by 12 by three got four, divided 12 by four got three, divided 12 by two got six, and then multiplied that with the top number. 12 divided by three times two, 12 divided by four times one, 12 divided by two, times three, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing with one half and one fourth. One half X minus one fourth Y equals negative two. 
It doesn't have to be 12 this time. It could be 12 because you could divide 12 divided by two and 12 divided by four, but there's an even smaller number you can use. So let's use the smaller one. Let's use four, right? Okay, so with that we have four times one half X, uh, I'm gonna say plus four times negative one fourth Y, just so that I don't lose the negative anywhere. You lose the minus sign equals four times negative two. All right. Two goes, do a different color. Two goes into four two times. Two times one is two. Four goes into four one time. One times a negative one is minus one. Four times a negative two is negative eight. Okay. So now we just, oh, sorry. Now we still have to do the addition method. <laughs> so now we have, wait, three times one, sorry. Three times one is three Y. <laughs> I apologize. It's like these are going together way too nicely. Okay, so I made a mistake. 12 divided by four is three, three times one is three y. Okay, so now we stack them again because they were stacked. So let's stack them back. Eight x plus three y equals negative 18. <gasps> so now we have like terms, but nothing's canceling, right? When it canceled nicely, it was just, One's a positive, oh, sorry. One's a positive, one's a negative, they go away. We can multiply again by something <laughs> to try to help it, okay? The easiest one I see is this is a negative one, this is a positive three. Let's make this a negative three. Okay, so now we have Now we have negative six X plus three Y equals 24. And then the bottom one stays the same. Eight X plus three Y. <sighs> Sorry guys, I made another mistake. We don't need to multiply it by a negative. It was already negative. All right, so let's change all these signs. All these signs. I apologize. All right, this is a positive three. This is positive three. We can do this. All right, three times two x is, I'm going to put it over here. So messy. Six x. Three times negative one y is negative three y. Three times a negative eight is negative 24. Ooh, we did it. 8x plus 3y equals negative 18. That one I just pulled straight from right here. Okay. These cancel. 8 plus 6 is 14, right? 14x equals, I don't know what negative 24 minus 18 is. Negative 42. And then let's divide that by 14. Well, we got our calculators out. That's a negative three. So X is negative three. So that was a lot of work um, because they were fractions. X is negative three. And then we put that X back into either one of these. Okay. You could put it into here, but ugh, right? No, thank you. So this is what we got. Let's put X, so let's put negative three in for X. So now we have eight times negative three plus three Y equals negative 18. Eight times negative three is negative 24 plus three Y equals negative 18. Right? Uh, add 24, add 24. 24 minus 18 is 
six. Three y is six, so that means y is two. So where x is negative three and y is two, these systems of equations will intersect. Okay. Example seven. Solve the system. Here, I would say x, negative 3x, negative 3y, positive 9y. I would choose the x's because they're smaller. So we have a negative 3x. If I multiply this by 3, I should have something I can use. So now I have 3x minus 3y equals 6. Sorry, negative 6, because that was a negative 2. Negative 3x plus 9y equals 5. Uh-oh. 3, negative 3, those cancel. This is supposed to be a 9. Because 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. All right, so we have 3x and negative 3x. We have negative 9y and positive 9y. Those cancel too. So now we have zero on this side, and then we have negative one because negative six plus five is negative one. So this is false, right? When all variables are eliminated and the solution is false, that means there is no solution. There is no solution to this system of equations because all of our variables canceled, but this is not true. If this said negative one equals negative one, that would be okay. If this said zero equals zero, that would be okay. But it says something that is not true. Okay, so it's no solution. And remember all the way back at the beginning of our notes, no solution means there are parallel lines. They will never cross anywhere. Let's just make sure. This will never cross anywhere. Or that it looks like it'll never cross anywhere, right? X minus three Y equals negative two. Negative three X plus nine Y equals five. Oh, those look close. But they are parallel. No solution. All right, example eight, two X plus five Y equals one and negative four X minus 10 Y equals negative two. Let's multiply this by two to cancel out the X's. So two times two X is four X, two times five Y is 10 Y, two times one is two, okay? And then we'll just copy this one down. Negative four X minus 10 Y equals negative two. The X is cancel. Ooh, the Y is cancel, so we got zero. And then two minus two is also zero. So this is true, which means there are infinite, remember the infinity symbol? Infinite. Solutions. Okay, infinite solutions, because every point on this line is also on this line. You wanna see what that means? Every point on line one is also on line two. Sorry, that was not what I meant to do. Reload. <laughs> All right, two uh, X plus five Y equals one negative 4x minus 10y equals negative 2. So you see how they are on top of each other. It becomes red, it becomes blue, red, blue, red, blue. They are the same line, okay? Last example. This is the last example because you can't multiply three by anything to get a four, and you can't multiply anything by two to get a five, right? So we're gonna have to do both of them. 
Uh, do you want to do the X's or the Y's? What do you think? What looks easier? The Y's, right? The Y's look easier than the X's. Uh, so this one's a negative. This is where I get messed up. This one's a positive. Do not multiply either by negative. I'm going to multiply this by two. Okay, 4x times 2 becomes 8x. 5y times 2 becomes 10y. 14 times 2 becomes 28. Almost said 24. All right, this one I'm going to multiply by 5. Five times three X is 15 X. Five times negative two Y is minus 10 Y. And then five times a negative one is negative five. 15 plus eight is 23 X. The Y's cancel. 28 minus five is 23. Oh, nice. So X is one, right? Because 23 divided by 23 would be one. Now I take that X, put it into either one of these. 3X minus 2Y equals negative 1. 3 times 1 minus 2Y equals negative 1. 3 minus 2Y equals negative 1. Subtract 3, subtract 3. Negative 2Y equals negative 4. Y is two. So when x1, sorry, at x1, y2, the system will cross. For x plus 5y equals 14. 3x minus 2y equals negative 1. It crosses at one, two. All right, and that is that. So that is how you solve systems of equations. Obviously, I like substitution, or sorry, the elimination method, but you can use graphing if you want, and you can use substitution if you want. All right, uh, thank you all, and have a good day.